Complexities turn to ban. EGs turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Instead of insta respawning, it will take him five seconds to make it to the lake. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no monkeys forever. Abaddon is good, and there's Swindle's last track. So, yep. Uh, EG certainly knows their enemy, boys. Now it's gonna be. Are, are they gonna ban Slardar, or what, what are they gonna do here? Uh, so I'm sort of a sea creature. Yeah, what's a Myrmidon? EG's turn to pick. Yeah, but that's that's what he is. But that's a Myrmidon like is a thing, thing yeah, right? Yeah, that's what he make is. That up. Yeah. No, I think it's what is it? An animal? Wait, let's hear. What does Slax have to say? He's the lore god. What is Slardar? Slardar is of the Ten Slytherin race. Reading. Yes. Down in the depths, he lives in the the depths of the ocean, Five not in the shallows reading. like the tide hunter Slytherin. Is he a Myrmidon or not, dumbass? <laughs> The <laughs> fuck is a mermaid? <laughs> There's a mermaid. Oh, hey, look and who it is. Hey, it's speaking of the devil. There's that handsome. He's just too good. No, no, that's the different. I can't. You're just all over the place. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. You're doing that's a Miradon, you fucking idiot! <laughs> yes. Did you mean the real thing? <laughs> or the mermaid? War Chief. EG's turn to pick. Dark Sia. Complexities turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> EG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Complexities turn to ban. <sighs> EG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oh. Complexities turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Silencer. EG's turn to pick. EG should have been watching that poke. Maybe, we'll see. Got wrecked. He Ten did Atos remaining. Hurricane Pike treads. Maybe you shouldn't say this. I mean, what if, <laughs> what if they're doing it? Earth spirit. But, uh, 
complexities yeah. no, I... learn to pick. Spirit. No. I think it's closed, friend. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> anyway. Five seconds remaining. No. Unless they uh, want to lose. Yeah, they want to lose. Super unlikely. I don't reserve time. Very greedy drafting. You, know, you could I think the biggest thing is because complexity has an IO, I mean their lanes are also kind of weak, so they're willing to be super greedy because of that. We don't know. I mean silencer, we've seen Z Freak play silencer. It's not for sure Moo's gonna play it. Yeah, we've seen the whole yeah. team plays it. But Shadow Fiend. No, that's I a Z Freak so. hero. Here's a Suzy classic, though. Mm -hmm. Shadow Fiend. And I'm surprised. I know NA teams talk a lot about how you... I know this isn't a pub, but you always last pick your, uh, your middle hero, but they're just confident, and we're just going to pick our middle hero and let EG counter with whatever they want. They got a gotcha pick at their last pick. Complexity wants to lure them into Five something in Yu-Gi-Oh in their ass. <laughs> You've activated my trap card, yeah, idiot. Trap, dumbass. Tex That's Odia! That's my blue eyes red dragon. <laughs> the forbidden one comes! Well, Templar Assassin. <laughs> wow. Sumail here for the mid lane. That's super... That's good. You, you almost have to play it as a carry now, because if Silencer has no farm versus a TA, I own TA get like one shot. Or I own Silencer get one shot by TA, like... This silencer has to get farm, I think. Honestly. Yeah. Reserve time. EG has amazing Roche control. You've got yeah. Sardar and TA for a minus armor on Roche himself, and just great team fight around the pit. Earth Spirit, Dark Seer, Slardar, those are heroes you do not want to fight in close quarters, man. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it, both teams have a lot, though. Like, Global Silence plus Centaur going in, that's going to be rough with that's Shadow true. Speed. Yeah. Do, you know, is this the first time NA has had a 9K versus 9K MMR matchup? Oh! I, and maybe. 747? You would know, Grant. You're the expert. Oh, they love MMR. <laughs> Clink's <laughs> final ban here for complexity. <sighs> Tough fifth ban here for EG. Yeah, I always like to see what teams think because I think it's going to be a carry silencer. It's nice to see, like, if EG, like, if they ban a sports, like, oh, well, I guess I'm a dumbass. <laughs> but if they ban a carry, I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> Gotta. Hmm. Yeah. Thinking. They're all huddled around one computer, you know, at the team house. They like, need something with some stun though. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Grant. <laughs> that, that moment. Oh, it's just. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. I was just picturing the team going around and be like, hmm, okay. <laughs> anyway. Complexity need more control though. Like you've got spammable stuns from Centaur and Global, and that's it. Like they need they need yeah. a lion, you know, or a Venge or somebody with a nice lockdown. Weaver. Yeah. That well, they here. definitely need a lockdown now. Oh, you are yeah. correct. Oh, yeah. All right, trap card complexity. What have you been cooking up, buddies? I mean, I gotta say, I like Silencer against Weaver, though. It actually is pretty good. Yeah. For a lineup. Yeah, yeah but if really anyone is. can handle it, come on. It, it's the Z God. Do you know in Canada they say Z Freak? It's called Z Freak. Trent, can you control? It is true. See? Z Freak. That's true. Yep. Reserve time. Zed Frick. Is that a website? Okay. TheCrazyCanucks.com? <laughs> That's going to be the team that wins the North American Battle Cup. Hey. 
They add use into words for no reason, like color as well. So what do we got here? Complexity, 10 seconds. Sl call it Slack. Tidehunter. Woo! Disruptor. It's Disruptor. That's a great pick. Carry Sansa. Called it, dumbasses. I'm the man. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was... He doesn't really have a lot of places to go. Making mm -hmm. meld kind of suck. Also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The quick round of predictions, boys. Who's taking game one? We saw the drafts. EG or complexity? I'm saying complexity game one. I like it. They've got some control. They've got a lot of silence. Disruptor yeah. and silencer, I believe, slacks. Actually, don't think so. Sorry. Uh, I feel like they have a lot of pressure on Z Freak, which is their big uh, playmaker yeah. on. Dead Freck on complexity, so with all that pressure on him, uh, Silencer won't be able to take off as much as he wants to, and then you got Shadow Fiend who's squishy as well. You're gonna have to go with EG. Right, yeah, well. I think I think T I think TA if he if TA gets a good start, they just win the game. The IO and Silencer and Disruptor are just useless versus TA who has good farm. I think the EG just wins. Yeah. Not anything OG here. yeah. He's gonna need Lincoln's that. is just Garbo in this yeah. game. Alright. Alright, let's pass well, it for yeah. God's sake. We got casters. Luckily, gang, like we've Yoda. got some experts to help us out here. We've got Annie and Purge to cast game number one. Alright, thank you very much, Zayori. We're gonna see if it's gonna be a clean EG stomp or if Complexity are actually gonna get up there and get it done. So, start things off. I'm Android thank being joined by Purge. <laughs> Can you hear me, Purge? I can hear you, yes. How are you doing? All right, there we go. Fixing some uh, sound stuff in the studio. Can you so, hear me now? Yep. Okay, cool. I think it'll be a really good game. Um, I, I like the draft that Cole's going for. It's weird, but it could have some potential to be really useful. Um, they are obviously very heavy on silences in the early game, but that's a pretty good solution against EG Zero. So I think if they can get some traction with it, it'll, they can definitely translate to, to a strong mid game. 30 seconds to battle. All right, Samael, so dumping everything on the ground here. He's littering. That's not okay. That's that's really not okay, dude. That's that's against the law. Why exactly does he do this? He's he's just testing the waters, trying to see if just anyone from Complexity is going to get cheeky. See if there's any traders on his team that deny items or steal <laughs> items. <laughs> it's a good check. I wouldn't do that in one of my pubs. Yeah, me neither. Every every little piece of item is actually. Because I expect that his lane is going to be mostly in a 1v1, just TA versus SF. He's going to have to deal with that by himself, and sometimes it can be a bit iffy to do that matchup call. It kind of depends on how many times his side blades spill correctly. Since it is a dual off lane, and then that's a dual lane on the top lane, which means that they're going to have a little bit of trouble zoning Centaur. So I, I think the, the dual off lane that EG has has to go fairly successful, I think, because um, I'm thinking about like a, a mid-game silencer backed up by an IO and a Shadow Fiend. That sounds like really good damage output, so... They gotta get some good roaming done by crit. This is here. Let's talk a little bit about this mid. TA versus Shadow Fiend. Definitely a lot of damage coming out of these two. Who are you expecting to farm better and you know get more blood? Kind of depends heavily on the first couple waves here. Um, Shadow Fiend went for raise level one just to guarantee he can get some last hits. Because if he goes uh, Necromaster, he gets a good player that, that he'll never get any last hits. And Sumail's so oh, good, obviously. Top lane monkeys in some serious trouble. He's got the bug on him. First blood does go to Zai. Okay, able to just cool. go and lock him out of lane. You see what he did? Arteezy went swarm level one. He didn't even get Sakuchi, so there was way more damage output than he expected. And the other cool part is that it lowers armor, which means that the actual crush from Slaughter does more damage in the first place. It was a cool little gank there. Down bottom, Universe taking a lot of damage here. He's just gonna be TPing out. All right, see ya, buddy. Good. Really good move there. As soon as the Thunderstrike comes out, and he already knew that uh, Swindles had oh, it. Oh, Z-Freak. 
trying to go just get a little farm for himself a couple of levels but crit keeping him at bay we talked about this io just being food for eg how do you feel about that uh it's kind of true but a lot of ios have been doing this jungle thing lately so crit just being here and experience range really screws what io wants to do because he can't actually fight he doesn't have any hp regen items because he's normally able to get around and avoid having that so um this small delay will make a huge impact he doesn't have tether yet so he can't escape he can't really gank lanes super well like if if just delays this it it slows down shadow fiend's ability to gain mana shadow fiend's ability to beat the ta and his ability to impact all, all the three lanes all right, so things are monkeys again here. Oh, yeah, I mean, bad. this is really tough. It's so hard for a center to come back from this. It's not one of those typical grab an iron talon, go to the jungle if it gets tough heroes, but well, he's going to be pushed to that eventually uh, as Arteezy snaps up another kill. I just don't see that that kill is, is okay for centaur there. Like, it's really tough when people do side pulls. You always want to get over there and grab the experience, but against really mobile carries like Weavers, it's so dangerous because instantly he gets behind you. And the other issue is monkeys grab return level one because he wasn't expecting to die so early. Oh. And now he's got level 2. 747 gonna witness two heroes just popping out of the woodwork, but not feeling too scared about that. Meanwhile, Z-Freak is the one in trouble as Zai chases him all the way down. He's able to go tether to that creep and get himself to safety, but... Pretty, he's, he's trying so hard, he's found his level 2, but now he's out of mana and pretty much out of health as well. But I think the interesting thing, he's just pressuring all over the place. He's doing such a good job. I, I don't think I've seen a team move so much in the early game in a long time. Like. The crit instantly rotates to the jungle to deny some experience. They're getting kills on Centaur. Mid's going okay, but not amazing, perhaps. Oh, oh the pushback no. for no. He's just getting kicked around here. Kinetic Field's gonna hold back the two aggressors for now. Allows him to get back to safety. Eats up an iron branched tree. But this is still EG getting very aggressive very early on, and so far it's paying off for them. Be a little dangerous from Ellen's. No, he'll be okay. Yeah, the only downside to Boulder smashing backwards is you have no follow up disable with the Dark Seer. So it was a good move though, because it, it lost Mu like 70% of his health. So definitely good pressure there. In the mid lane, uh, TA is up to 20 and 6, whereas 747 is at 18 and 3. This is uh, probably a player matchup where I would actually say that um, the, the player skill is actually semi comparable. Um, and the fact that it's an SF versus this as well, plus he's gotten roamed on a little bit, makes this pretty competitive here. Once again, Centaur may be in some trouble. He's going to stomp. He's going to get the better of the engages. Zai can't crush before that, so at least Monkey's buying himself some time. He's getting some decent levels, but in terms of last hits, he's sitting at seven and two deaths. Definitely yeah. tricky. Deaths is definitely too much, but he does have a lot of experience, which is pretty good. Um, you know, he's matching RTZ here, and that's mostly because Zai hasn't been pulling. He's mostly been, like, trying to get kills, and looks like he's done some side pulling as well which usually denies more experience than gives him experience. So despite monkeys getting behind here, even a fast level six could make a big difference considering the um, early mid pressure that Cole has an advantage over uh, EG. Yeah, I think movement's gonna be super important here. The earlier you can get that stampede online, the better, especially when you've got you know, rolling boulders coming at you, you got dark seer surges, it's all about speed here. Yeah, and EG just doesn't have very good disables. It's pretty much just Slardar disable and Ursa disable. Past that, the, the Stampede from Centaur can make a big difference. And and obviously, if uh, Centaur can turn that into a fast blink dagger, that'll change everything. Because then he can actually start initiating the fights and, and getting follow-ups from Silence. That's really what they want to do, because it's a little bit of dive bottom oh, here. Melons, he's going to go. Nice kinetic fields. Doing some work, but Crit's able to roll right on through. Universe so the, gets low, but he'll be fine. Yeah, this is the big danger against uh, playing against a an early silencer carry. Like he actually does really good damage. Um, this hero has one of the uh, most amazing agility gains. He gets three agility per level, so his Ooh. natural armor is going to be really high as is his uh, attack speed. So, um, if he just keeps translating towards pretty standard items, he's got two nukes between last word as well as Cur arcane curse. And as he levels up glaives of wisdom, then he just has pure damage on top of that. Like he's actually going to DPS good. Gets low, able to cut the bug off himself. Thought there was going to be some backup for that one. But yeah, back to Silencer. Uh, I really like that point you made about the Agi. Most people think, oh, he's just, you know, super heavy int hero, but he is a fairly formidable right clicker. He gets some good yeah. Agi rolling for himself early on. And people think he's so squishy too because he doesn't have disables and he silences people and he gets beaten late game. But carry Silencer it, with a cool survivability items is very difficult to kill, actually. So I think he's going to be kind of a nice solution okay. against the uh, Slar. I think Melons yeah. is quite dead, though. Yeah, difficult to kill. Melons is not. He's just going to roll over. Gets off the kinetic fields, but. That's just given some information to Moo, who's left in lane all alone. 
it is kind of important that it was Swindles that died there and not Mu though, because if, if you just roll over the silencer a bunch of times and he does have trouble getting that first mech up or force staff or whatever he's building, then he's in a bad spot. And this is actually something that some a lot of other carries wouldn't have to do. He has to leave the lane right now because he knows there's a chance to get in dived, especially against a Darkseer. So now he's kind of in this weird place where he can't even jungle very well because Silencer doesn't jungle super well. Um, and it's definitely going to provide a big issue. Look at Zai. He's got that invis rune. He's crawling around getting so much information. He's also Templar level Assassin. 5 right now. Yeah, Templar Assassin's in some serious trouble. Zai's going to go in. Crush lands onto two, but the glimpse back. Smail may still be in trouble. They bring crit in and they're able to kill off the Disruptor. Z Freak gonna be going in help in 747. Finally take out that TA, but it's gonna cost him his life. And now Z Freak, oh god, he's just left to the bullies. His spirits are doing so much work, but they can't finish the job. Both Zai and Crit get incredibly low, but in the end, it's still worthwhile for EG. Really good fight by EG there. Um, on the bright side, Suzu was able to kill the TA at least, but very close to killing the other two guys. That invis rune paint off big time. And I really like, obviously, the, the iron shell, the guy that's invis, because you know that he's going to be somewhere where a fight's going to happen. And got a bit lucky in, this, in the sense that they grabbed that rune right before Swindles got there to put the ward down, so there was no reveal that that gank was coming. So Zai's rotations have been just godly. Like, the fact that he hit level 6 here and we're 7 minutes in, the hell, man, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, I feel like this guy's never been in lane. He's been chasing the wisp, he's been going in, ganking mid, he's been landing some dope crushes, but... We'll see if the game progresses, if Complexity are going to respond to that movement, or if they're just going to kind of sit around and, and stay in their lanes and be easy targets. Right now, Moo, be, and you can feel yeah. he's terrified just huddling behind this tier 1 tower. Even with Z-Freak here, it's so scary. Yeah, he really should. He's trying to pick up a fast helm of the Dominator. It's a great item on Silencer. Um, regen on top of decent armor that he has base is, is going to be great survivability. Oh, <laughs> Zai goes in and takes the rune out from under 747's nose here in the bottom jungle. That's always definitely annoying, but I think 747's still doing okay. His last sets are very comparable, only four behind the TA. And if we look at net worth, he's pretty much comparable, but everybody else on his team is definitely having trouble. So looks like the net worth advantage is certainly in EG's favor. Yeah, right now they got their big boys online. I think you gotta have TA get big and you gotta have Weaver get big. If everyone else in your team flops, those are the important ones. And so far they're off to fantastic starts. Yeah, and even Slaughter's still doing well. 800 gold past his Tranquil Boots. He's gonna try to pressure Melons here. He's, he's doing a little get... nuke. <laughs> yeah. Melons will deal with it. He was expecting that glimpse, but still fun nonetheless. Moo's getting some alright farm here on the silencer, but he's fallen really far behind that weaver just in terms of net worth. Yeah, and I think that's just because the rotations from EG have been so good that they're just pressuring everywhere. So, And because they have a silencer, not, not a carry that's a little bit more survivable or higher damage output in a short burst, they don't feel comfortable not farming, farming outside of the tower basically. So kind of have like three cores that can get farmed but are a little bit scared to do so and as a result it just slowly slowly tickles uh, trickles into um, eg having a big farm advantage so if this just keeps happening we're going to get to like a mid game period where cole's just going to get overrun but the big thing is that they keep their towers up because if they lose this tier one tower they're going to be put in a really bad position that makes it harder for them to win mid game fights Moo, no, he's walking around. Z Freak's by his side, but that is still a very dangerous place for a silencer to be. He's getting kicked, he's getting punched. That tether is doing a good job saving his life. He pops off the global silence and he will escape, but that's still a costly disengage. Yeah, global just for that. Doesn't look very good. Z Freak didn't have any bottle charges either there, which made it a little bit harder for them to commit to the fight. He only had a magic stick, so a little tough there. Oh, they're going to go for the dive maybe. Amp damage runs out though. Arteezy, he's all in for this. He really wants to go. Crit's going to keep on rolling through, Great. but the relocate out. Quickly time, Arteezy just time lapses. Everyone's ready for this. TP in from the centaur. This could be a pretty sizable fight oh. there. Oh, the <laughs> double edge from Monkey just sticking it to him. Now the relocate's over. They're coming back in, and there was another TP. It looks like all the complexity trying to mount this uh, little initiation there. They get the Weaver, and they know there's no time lapse, and that is a massive kill right there. Free farming Weaver goes in for a gank and immediately gets killed. That was huge play there. The fact that Swindles happened to be 6 in that fight was crucial as well. Because if Swindles didn't have level 6 for that moment where Weaver escapes, that was pretty much an EG advantage there. I'd say. I mean, obviously they still lost the, the Earth Spirit under the tower, but the amount of pressure they're putting on is ridiculous. And they focused, forced all of Cole to rotate. So huge grab there to get that, despite the, the hard laning stage. Oh. Crits revealed in the trees as the spirits clip onto him. Just a couple of pings out there. I like this dominated Wildwing Ripper, just keeping a good view of the area near the shrine. A monkey's gonna get corrosive hazed and... Dyer's bottom Surging over. They're gonna Great go ulti. in 747, just drops the Requiem, and they're gonna get a nice kill off the back of that. 
be freaking Moo. I mean, they're ticking low, but that tether's gonna keep them both healthy. Crit, he's stuck in the trees, doesn't want to walk, uh, you know, back the other way. Arteezy, gonna take out Z Freak, but it's a kill you kind of expect when it comes to these full five on five fights. But Moo, that's someone they can't afford to lose. Silencer goes down, and now it's just gonna be <laughs> the remainers Blink of touch. Call. They've gotta kill Sumail, but this is scary. Susie's really low here. Got to land yeah. a disable on him, but se six seconds until the stun. They do have a glimpse as well. They can pull him back here. Looks like they're going to go for it. They got enough mana for one raise. The stomp connects. The right clicks are there. Oh. And that's going to be Monkeys picking up the kill with his double edge. Hugely outplayed there. Um, I, I think I, I feel like EG is playing a little too overconfident oh, here. because Wildwing Ripper lived. He did live. Nice. He was actually useful. Uh, armor or against all of the minus armor of EG is really nice to have. But I, I really felt like, uh, I mean, EG possibly could have had a, a great initiation. But that ulti by Suzy was amazing because it just killed Slaughter at the start of the fight and it took them way too long to actually blow up the silencer and they still haven't used global because uh, now from that last time that they tried to get a kill so this guarantees the tower death another big thing is all the dire wards are in the mid lane whereas all the fights are going on the bot lane I feel like that was a uh, moderate mistake from the supports there if they had observer wards actually near the tower they might have had a better chance of winning the fight it's like complexity, they found their window and they're just going to keep going. All five of them starting to work on this tier two and, and that'll be nice for objectives. But then you look at this uh, Darkseer getting complete free farm. Pretty much everyone on EG feeling completely uncontested. Sumail taking out a big cluster of Ancients as well. This TA is well on her way to being a problem. Already with the Blink Dagger on top of Treads and almost I, uh, a third of the way towards her Deso. I, I would have agreed with that maybe like two minutes ago because after losing that fight, it kind of offsets a lot of that advantage they have. Like if you look at Darkseer and Starter's net worth, they're the same and they're way below the other two cores of uh, the Radiant team. So because that fight went kind of bad and because they lost TA, Sumail stayed way too long. Maybe he was trying to play out the glimpse slowly or something, but fight, they overcommitted. Now they lose two towers. Now they're just at a huge disadvantage. And in fact, the uh, Cole actually already got the tier one tower top. So now they have a three tower advantage against EG in the moment. They're, they're actually firmly in the lead despite that early start. Yeah, they're doing pretty nicely here. I worry about the Silencer being able to keep pace with the cores of EG, though. How's he do that? Oh, meanwhile, Slardar just getting dropped. Nice deep rotation coming in from the Radiant Complexity. Yeah. I mean, they're really putting on the moves. And this is the this is the part of the game where EG has to be really careful. And they kind of messed up the game heavily by getting into this situation because as soon as, like, they won the lanes convincingly, but as soon as these first couple skirmishes go rough, makes it very very difficult for them to survive in these mid-game situations because all it takes is an observer ward from cole a centaur in the area and they've got to relocate kill every time because the centaur stun is going to stun for so long that they're going to get the follow-up kill and if it's really hard to get the kill they'll pop global silence as well so it doesn't matter where mu is farming he's just going to silence and if it's the uh, slardar if it's the weaver that hero's dead could be even ta going down so really tough game now for EG to play out. Um, they pick up a Buckler on Silencer as well to cover the armor issue a bit more. It looks like he's going to go into an Atos next. He just wanted the Buckler for a armor transition. Good choice there. And now all the fights are really tough for EG because Cole is not going to stop pushing and they have far better team fight. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I think is potentially a really big problem is that Complexity don't have fantastic lockdown. They've got, yep. you know, pretty good going on with the the disruptor his kinetic fields have been super on point but you know the weaver once he gets his lincoln sphere is going to be pretty hard to keep down yeah he may pick up the lincolns we'll see um either way it, even if he has lincolns there's still global silence that can completely stop that so it's yeah. this big period like silences are so good until your opponents get the items that solve the issue which is manta styles bkbs but until that point, Silence is amazing. It's almost as good as the stun in a lot of ways. So if Cole just plays these team fights correctly and they keep doing death pushes like this, they could just get a Rax by 20 minutes and it won't be time for EG to get an actual beat. I mean, Complexity, they're going in. This tier two is theirs. There's nothing they can do about it. Wildwing Ripper, MVP, man. <laughs> it's still good to have him too, because if anybody's near the tornado, their blink daggers will get interrupted. And if they can't actually do like a slaughter blink crush, they're going to lose the fight. So Cole goes to the next tower, added to the tier 2 top, almost all the towers on the map are gone. Um, EG has been trading a little bit, they got the tier 2 in the safe lane, and now they're trying to pressure bottom. RTZ is making some good progress here, he's queued up a BKB, he's only about 1700 gold away. That will give him a lot of advantage that he needs, but it's going to be a bit until he finishes them. They're going to TP defend, can they get RTZ here? Oh, they're looking for it. He's, he's dusted, but they can't actually lock him down. Meanwhile, Crit just going to be trying to roll out of here, but will end up bopping right into the IO. Tries to TP out, but Melons cleans him up. 
I mean, I guess it's pretty important. He just kind of bodyguarded for Arteezy there, but there's still a push going on in the top lane. Looks like Mu747 and Z Freak should end up getting this tower. So they get a free kill, they defend their structures, and they're getting something in return. Might have to global here if they go in. Yeah, Think about like it. That's going to be an issue here. Sumail unloads onto Z Freak, just blasting him for it. They lose the Wisp. Nice back wall, but I don't think it's going to be enough to slow down Suzy. As he is just kind of booking it away. Goes in for a raise. Chunks down Universe. 747 still getting low. There's Monkeys in the back line. Takes out the Slardar. 747, can he get out of here alive? Sumail stuck in the kinetic field. They get him as well. This is amazing. Really well done. Complexity are looking so polished right now. They really are. They, they play that fight so well. They they ran back slowly. I, I felt they got to just get out. They got to TP or use global silence, but Mu held it. And the important thing was is that he tried to, he stuck around and he tried to keep the Shadow Fiend alive, popping Buckler, stuff like that. And the moment they went in was when they knew the refraction happened and Curse of the Silent was off cooldown, because then they had lots of damage sources to break through the survivability that Sumail was trying to work with. And as soon as they do that, then they could actually turn the fight as long as the SF kept running. So really nice plays by them there. There's been a couple mistakes from Cole's side, but ever since the Lanian stage, they've 100% stabilized and played the fights correctly. Just won them the fight. That was ridiculous. But, uh, the little armor helps helps a lot. Way the fact that 747 didn't drop, and I mean, Monkeys on this Centaur has played phenomenally. We saw him get you know, double killed in lane. It was rough. I'll hold that thought here as Weaver's in a serious pit of trouble there. Gonna get glimpsed back, killed off. Mu grabs another one, and now Zai, he's just slithering for his life. This Weaver has hit the deck twice now in the last couple of minutes. This is not great. Some sloppy disruptor play, I must say, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> he got it done. It's just Venn diagram of kinetic field and static storm. Yes. They kind of touch a little bit. The least conventional static storm combo I've ever seen. <laughs> but it's there's so much threat, right? They can bring Centaur anywhere. They can bring Shadow Fiend. They can bring Silencer. They can bring Disruptor. Whatever hero it is that needs to get ganked, they have ways to make the gank happen. And until they get BKBs, EG is not going to survive these fights and ganks. So EG needs to get a good team fight soon or get some split push advantage and finish their items or they're going to lose the game or get it raxed early. Oh, they're Email's trying. Deso, at least. Monkey's got his blink. He's definitely thinking about going in. Sumail separates from the herd. This Ooh. is potentially a fatal mistake. Monkey's jumps in, has the double edge, and Sumail just sitting back, letting Suzy whack away at him. That is a dead TA. That is a huge portion of damage dead on EG. Now they're going in for more. 747, still BKB, still feeling huge. Magnetized from crit, but is it really doing enough? Z Freak tries to get up onto the high ground, vacuumed back, but the tether doesn't break. Now Z Freak's all on his own. Now he's going to get picked off. This is still going really well for Complexity. They get the targets they want. Chasing after Crit now, occupying two of them. Centaur ult committed. Crit goes down. They hunt for the rest of EG here. Looks like Melon's potentially still interested. Has a Static Storm up in 10 more seconds. No glimpse either, so I think that'll be... Well, no, they've got the ward up there still. Monkeys, he's got EG that blink stop that he loved so much, and he's going in, but will not get it. Nice play by EG there. They knew that they had vision. Oh, oh great Static Storm! Fading two of them into the Static Storm. Arteezy's just sitting there looking after his teammates, trying to figure out what to do in this game. That was good. Good move by Disruptor there. Uh, unfortunately, his team is too far away to follow up, and they did the smart thing. Just said, all right, good job, Swindles, but this is not safe. We'll just back out. We've got an advantage. You do not mess around at this point. Um, crucial moment in that last fight, actually, was the TA initiation. He missed his Melt Strike. It's huge. He should have two-shot Disruptor, but he messed it up, and as a result, died for nothing. Tango, no! I think, you know, Templar Assassin just trying to go after these small picks, seize these easy kills, but there's so much punish right now on Complexity. They'll just jump right at you. And again, Monkey's in the Centaur, huge playmaker, getting a super early blink and just going in. He's afraid they, of nothing They might get right Roshan time, though. It's going to be really close. I think he's just going to get this. I'll see Monkey's. He's, he's definitely gotta go now. feeling it out. They got it. Sumail now with an Aegis. Monkey's heads into the pit. They're trying their luck anyway. Global's committed. Now Monkey's heads back in, looking for the cleanup crew. They should be able to find it. They pop an Aegis. There's a vacuum. They get everyone into the pit, but that's just going to be a bigger problem for the TA when Sumail Got comes him. back. Sumail, I mean, he's doing everything he can, but that refraction can only do so much. Really nice move by Monkeys there. I, I love the blink stun even after the Aegis is grabbed because you never know. There's going to be a couple of heroes in there. It was, it was a good move from EG, and they had to do something like that because they know they can't win fights very well. So they ought to try to get some advantage in another way. And it still led to a lost team fight for them. But the net worth still look okay if you look at the, the scaling of them. They're pretty comparable, but will they finish those BKBs? There's no way they win fights. Yeah, starting to get a little bit concerned for this Weaver. You want to see at this point in the game, you know, 20 minutes in, Weaver really starting to make those plays, starting to dish out huge damage, but it's still feeling like he can't do a whole lot in these team fights. Yeah. It's, it's been tough. He's died twice. He's got positive KDA. He's farming oh. well, but 
just high ground quite attempt have it. coming in. Nice back wall, but monkeys, he returns the favor, just goes and double it. It's in beyond godlike. Oh my complexity, they're doing it. They got two heroes down on EG already. They're just gonna chew off the bugs and keep going at it. They're doing really good, great executions. Uh, a global silence in 50, so there's a bit of a window here that EG maybe could pressure. They've got vacuum up in six, so they could redo the wall. Um, no, he gets caught. Nope, they can't, not without a dark seer. He's gonna be going down, does have buyback. Is it worth it to try to defend this tier three? It's getting low anyway, 747 with that dragon lance from the low ground, making easy work of it. Fortify popped out from EG, but it's not gonna last forever. Now shrines are vulnerable and monkeys is still going in. They wanna keep this TA dead. They make the call just back out without any losses and that's what complexity are gonna do. They smoke on their way out. It was under a ward and Zai's gonna go break some of the smokes at least. And they but... got a buyback out of this as well to the Dark Seer, so good accomplishment there from Cole and once again they don't actually lose any heroes on the retreat so EG losing advantage more and more and more the fights get harder a golden thread. they can take out EG shrines and make it really difficult for them to get to the bottom jungle really difficult for them to get to the Roche pit yeah, that's huge, especially if they can keep Observer Wards up in the area surrounding EG's immediate base. Then it's going to be hard for EG to cross the map and actually look for kills, as long as e uh, Cole doesn't get caught on the map. And it's kind of like having a Spirit Breaker on your team, having the IO. Because of the IO, that means that even if they feel comfortable pushing lanes out, they always have to worry about that TP relocation. Sume so looking for a kill with an Invis rune, though. This could be big. He did spot some heroes, but Cole's doing the smart thing, grouping up his five and going to take the shrines now. Yeah, I mean, Sumail could probably find a kill, but then would be immediately killed in return, so definitely playing a safer game here. Templar Assassin already with uh, five deaths. Do you see this uh, armlet on Z Freak? <laughs> I, I see the armlet. New? Does he have arms to wear it, though? Like, how does he turn That's it on That's a good question. Off? Where does this go? Does it? I think you just put it inside where the eye and it just, like, like orbits the <laughs> like center. Like a jellyfish? Uh, no, I was thinking more like planetary structures. Oh, okay. But... Kind of a cool item, gives you decent regen, 7 HP per second, obviously he drains himself HP, but it makes his right click really strong since he is a strength hero. Ah uh, yes, kind of, the IO right armor. click. Honestly, this is kind of cool, like his armor is incredible right now and he's against a slaughter, I, I, this is pretty justified. I mean, we've seen what just a little bit of armor on the buckler can do, that was a phenomenal pickup. Congrats Moo, still sitting on that value buckler. They're going and, in. Ooh, they oh, get they the get the Atos onto the Slardar. He went in trying to scout out, trying to be sneaky, but ends up just feeding the Silencer. Some more Int 22. Stolen Int for Moo right now, and these racks, and they're feeling the burn. Don't see that coming. It's it's hugely set up. Mm -hmm. Are they really going? This, this is happening right now? Oh, All right, yeah. they got him. Monkey's still beyond godlike, has yet to be killed since the two immediate deaths in the laning phase. He was the first two deaths of the game and has not died since then. 11, 2, and 8. He's going to get slowed down by the psionic trap, but he's just so gosh darn tanky now with that hood and now a full Ags as well. Very difficult like the, to get on top of him. I like the way they're putting kinetic fields down whenever Monkeys is about to initiate, just in case. <laughs> it gives him a little bit of protection there, just in case the, they, they want to chase after him. The Cole has consistently been like this, and all of the iterations of their team, they're just almost always on the same page. And I really feel like this five-man stack here is hitting really good stride. They've made a big improvement since their roster swap. Absolutely. I mean, net worth right now is 10,000. We are talking about, you know, literally key of major direct invite team and they're getting whooped by complexity at the moment. And I believe they have to play open qualifiers, right? Gold does, because they had the yeah. monster swap. Yeah. I don't think they're going to have too much trouble there. <laughs> I mean, if, if this is how they're playing consistently, holy crap, this is like a whole new complexity. Yeah. I mean, some of this definitely was a little draft related. EG probably felt overconfident, especially after their laning stage. They do some aggressive stuff, lose that bot uh, fight out near the tier one tower, and then things get out of hand because Cole hasn't been like giving the opportunity back to his, their opponents. But um, by all means, oh, Cole really guy? playing well. He's asking, playing around. He's asking for trouble, man. He's there's trying to get vision. There's, yeah, there's mobility now on the side of him, but uh, they'll show mercy yeah. for now. Yeah, they maybe could have. If they stampeded there, they might have gotten the glimpse off, but... No, Slaughter is not super farmed just yet. I mean, they're at the point where if they get any kill, they, they take a Rax, basically, which is what they did in the last fight. They're very happy to use the Disruptor combo against an Earth Spirit. It's basically like Earth Spirit, Darkseer, basically everybody, pretty much anybody on EG if they kill. They're all important enough to the team fight that uh, they give them a big advantage. They got the Slaughter here. He was playing around and flew too close to the sun. He's out. 
Yeah, these make two. comes back in. The Mel Strike is barely doing anything to 747. He's just going to go unload the Requiem. Sumail not going to get stuck in the kinetic field. Pops the BKB. ZZ going to be backing off okay. for now as Shrines are activated on the dire side of the map. Everyone's got that refresh and EG. Yeah, they're going to go in. Good choice. And they're looking for this. They've got to take a fight. Nice vacuum, but the oh, Global sucks. Silence comes out, so they can't finish their combos. Looks like Monkey's just going back in, and they're able to isolate down Zai. That Slardar just can't stay alive. Arteezy, though, making quick work of Moo, will find the Silencer. What's it going to cost them, though? Nice kinetic field holding crit in place. The Magnetize comes off, and it looks like Melons may end up going down. There's just not much he could do about that. Deep Freak, he's trying his hardest. He's armlet toggling so well. He's doing everything he could possibly do, but still goes down. Now Universe with a scrape of health left, trying to run for Monkeys, will end up going down. And Monkeys is able to TP home. One of the only survivors of this bloody fight. Really good pressure there by EG. That was definitely the time to chase. Uh, they showed some hesitation because the Slardar was already dead, but that buyback was absolutely necessary. And that's because they went on the TA. The TA was able to barely survive because she popped her KB. And then that means no Requiem. Um, no BKB for S uh, for SF, and then it just became a game of can Cole escape before EG gets the initiation, and they chased perfectly, got the important kills. Arteezy especially did a great job in that fight. Um, I lo love his item build too. He bought the BKB and yeah. then instantly picked up a Crystallis because he needed as much damage as possible immediately. And this item is very good for for increasing your physical damage because of your double hit from Geminate. So um, maybe a little unconventional here, but definitely a good pickup. And it looks like he's going to go into the Bloodthorn next. That's what I was going to ask. Do you think he goes for the Daedalus here? Is that just a little too crazy? I think the, the silence from the Bloodthorn is going to be massively helpful. Yeah, it could be really useful, especially against heroes like Io, Silencer, or even like Centaur or Disruptor. The, the silence would be really good. Um, obviously, the, the Daedalus crit is far better, and it's a much cheaper item. But in that vein as well, if you look at how Cole's been playing this game, they're playing this like group up as five and push thing. And for heroes like Silencer, I feel like you usually don't buy a BKB on him in these kind of strats. You just want to get him really tanky instead. Because uh, if you buy BKB, then that could have been like an armor item or a, like a Shiva's or something. So I feel like um, just going for a Bloodthorn, I think it'll be all right. It's obviously terrible against SF who has BKB, but against a lot of the other heroes, it's pretty good. Oh, plus they have... TA and lots of other minus armor, so I think it's a good choice. It'll amplify his team's damage as well as his own. Yep, we talked about Moo getting armor, but he doesn't need to buy an item for it. He can just dominate the armor creep crit. He's gonna make his way up to the high ground, but that's not gonna save you there. Is still the victim of Monkey's Axe, and they bring in Silencer's Glaive from the low ground, picking up the kill. Easy peasy. He's stolen 26 intelligence, by the way. He's, He's done got a good job. A lot. And picking up things like Rod of Atos are so good on this hero. He's got 140 intelligence right now. His mana pool is massive, and he's doing 80% of his int in pure. Oh. That's a lot. Uh, that is a lot of damage, and we're talking about a silencer that spent most of his laning phase hugging his tier 1. I mean, this was not an aggressive silencer. This wasn't immediately a snowball rolling down the hill. This is, you know, complexity, sticking it out through a tough laning phase, and now Centaur Silencer, two of the heroes that struggled the most in the early game, are on top of the charts. Heroes are very tanky at the moment. Monkey's having a little trouble here. Hasn't oh, picked up any armor items, but... He's going for heart. Uh, yeah, he is. That's a good choice, I think. Actually, I, I'm not the biggest fan. I kind of wish this was an armor item. Um, heart is good because it allows them to reflect damage with return damage, but raw HP is one of the worst things you can build against minus armor, and their enemy team is literally all minus armor. <laughs> I, I really feel like something like a Lotus Orb would have been better, or at least a Plate Mail before he started building towards the heart. So I think this is maybe one of the first item mistakes we're seeing here, but who knows, maybe he'll be able to get it fast enough and transition to armor after. The regen is going to be pretty nice for that, so uh, Complexity can continually reset their fights. Now, Io, I think he may just have to be a sacrificial lamb here. Z Freak living for a surprisingly long time as Slardar is going to be focused down. This Wisp is just a patch of bugs as the rest of Complexity is going in for the fight. Monkeys, he goes in, he gets the hook stomp there. It's going to be a very nice back wall, but is it enough to keep each of you alive here? Arteezy still chipping away at everyone from the corner. Crit. He's just walking himself out. I think that's going to be a very dead crit. And TA finished off by the double edge as well. It's just Arteezy left alive, but he's still fighting. Arteezy wants more. He wants Susie. They're going to be trying to focus him Dodge down. Atos. The wall illusion. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, they're going to get Arteezy, though. Oh, All right. okay. Everyone's dead. It's nicely done by a universe there. The um, SF illusions are really good. They give the minus six armor aura as well, even if it's... um even if it's an illusion from an enemy. So it works out. Got pretty close to the end, but nice fight for Cole. I like I like that Shadow Fiend could only die to himself. The wall illusion was the only thing that could... Hey man, Arteezy was there too. 
a little. Oh, he picks up a diffuse blade afterwards. Interesting choice. Um, I like this. They they could use a little. They need a little bit more lockdown. It actually does a lot of damage right now, mana burn wise. It does 50 per hit. Geminate, you're draining 150 mana in like two attacks, basically. That's a stupid amount of mana. Um, and does a lot of physical damage on top of that, too. The item choices, but the fight just didn't quite go well. Uh, that's kind of a bad place for EG to fight, really, because it gets really clumped up. Kind of good for Universe, I guess, for the Darks here, but past that, I don't think EG was too happy to, to find their opponents right there. It's just kind of Slardar going in, trying to be sneaky. Wisp got caught out, and then everyone just kind of joined the rumble. Yeah, they kind of had to take the fight, though, because they're far behind. Um, they've got to take engagements like that. A lot of medallions picked up on Cole as well. I think they have right now. One on Disruptor, one on Io. And I, I don't think that's too bad, actually. I kind of like... Um, Dude, armor's winning right. games. <laughs> like, as long as they don't use it, it's just a decent armor item, 7 armor. It's not amazing, but it's good. And once you make that into a Solar Crest, uh, solar crest then it becomes ridiculous. 12 armor, plus you can lower... Um, a hit chance on heroes like Weaver or something like that. That's hugely beneficial because they're not going to get a Monkey King bar anytime soon, and it's just cheap armor. God, I love the little Frost Ogre's animation when he casts it. Oh, here we go. EG moving forward. Universe going to be vacuuming down this Disruptor, and they're going for it. They get the Meld Strike. Disruptor is now dead. There's no Static Storm available for the fight, but one more four staff forward in the Glade secures Moo the kill on Slardar. Monkeys with his heart. He's still charging forward. He wants this. Zumail going to be going Boulder. in. Boulder Kick holds back Monkeys, and now the Requiem hits nothing. 747 just dump that ult and the BKB and won't find much, but they may be able to kill Arteezy. There's no time lapse, Ooh. and that bug is dead. Arteezy caught on the wrong side of the river. And he made over. a huge mistake at the end, too. He he pops Sakuchi, and then he instantly popped BKB, which breaks Sakuchi, which means that he's just walking with no oh, boots. Oh, oh, big back Nice here. back wall. Darkseer is ready to go, and they might actually find what they need to off this kill. The Death Requiem, however, doing a lot of work. Will cost Darkseer his life, but that's still worth it if that's the only casualty. Oh but God. it's a team wipe. That is complexity coming out 100% on top. Did you see that damage? That was like two hits took out 50%, 40% of TA's life at the end there. Monkeys Dude, is good. going insane here. He's more <laughs> farm than TA is. Like, I had some big doubts of him in that laning stage, but he is wrecking this game. And this heart's paying off big time. 45 extra strength is another, like, 30 physical damage every time somebody attacks him. And at the end of the fight, it's just he's just always there, reflecting damage and staying alive. I mean, that heart is so good for just being able to jump into crazy situations, and he has had fun with it. Look at him, just... Tower does not hurt him whatsoever. Well, even with the minus does, armor but... and damage. He's, he's still going at it. There we go. Power taken out. There is going to be a relocate on top of him. Just doing a little bit of work there. Going to be taking monkeys out. That attack speed coming forward. Zai with a nice little crush, but... And they can't really do much about this there. Roshan, meanwhile, going down. As up top, we do have a fight. God the Slardar is dead, and the relocate takes him out safely. Catapult. Rax doesn't fall. Okay, it does. The catapult gets it. Guy was, uh... He, he plays the always hit buildings strategy. <laughs> I like it. Good old catapults. That was really nice movement there by by Cole. And Monkeys is just playing his hero perfectly. Oh, I like it? this. He, he got 10% spell amp as well over the 15 strength. Interesting choice, but was it? I feel like it amps return damage. I bet it. I feel like it would. Probably counts as a spell return. And I, if it does, that's that's a good idea. I don't Prob know. Gives you a lot more damage than the strength does, even though the strength is good. Uh, but now obviously amps double edge as well. Amps your hoof stomp. I mean, he's clearly outputting a lot of damage. That's that's really obvious. And even Stampede damage is amped as well. That's incredible. Strength multiplier damage times 3. So that's like 160 times 3. And that's getting buffed by another 10% he... spell amp. So much damage. Look at Monkey's quick buy. Is he going for another heart? I don't know what it looks like. I, there's there's no way no, that he no, doesn't he just changed, buy a plate it. mail first. Like, there's it's no way. Was... If he bought another heart, I would definitely flame the shit out of him. <laughs> buy a plate mail, and then you're like, okay, maybe I get more strength. I just, I want to see this cast go from Purge flaming monkeys in the very early game when he dies in lane to like Purge just cranking on monkeys, talking about everything he I does mean, in such a good way to like get the second he's heart wrecking. and trash to you. He's wrecking, <laughs> but you can still make item mistakes when you're wrecking him. He's, you know, by all means, he's playing great. Shiva's is, uh, Shiva's are, he's going to go um, the Aether line or Lotus Orb now. I think this is a good choice. That or Shiva's, either would be would have been good or AC maybe. Yeah. Good options. Uh, AC is what SF's going to they smoke into the enemy base here. They're going to try to take a kill and then take the barracks. And they're just, they're just going straight in for the structures, monkeys. Still sitting back, still smoked up. It's going to expire, but 
Look at Susie just chopping away. He's got his full eye of Scotty now. And there we go. Monkey's just going forward, holding our TZ back. The Rax is done. There is going to be that vacuum wall onto just Monkeys. This is going to be a Jeez. huge bounty if they can uh, kill yep. the Centaur. And they do. That is a 10 streak ended. They wasted that's a, global. That's a thousand gold going to the TA. She's going to BKB. Ain't going to get glimpsed back this time. And now Moose running for his life. These are two enormous kills that Call really can't afford to give up. Aegis popped from the silencer. And I don't think there's a clean way out of this one. Yeah, I don't think so. And uh, there was also a relocate from the IO, so he's going to get cleaned up as well, most likely. TZ can chase this. He's got Diffusal Blade here. And he used to remove the... There was a haste, I believe, on IO bottled, so he thought he could get away, but gets caught up. That was a huge mistake by Cole. Huge advantage. They get the double racks at least, but... Or the second racks, but... I'm blind assassin. She got both of those really high-value kills, and that's that was about 16 or 1700 gold just straight to her in that fight from kills alone. Massive. She finishes Hurricane Pike. Now she can save herself or others. Um, Orchid's finished. Could be making Bloodthorn next. This, this is the space that EG needed. It's still going to be really difficult for them to win from this position, but they certainly can do it. Little fights like that. And uh, yeah. the big thing about that fight, Centaur just didn't have armor. Honestly, if he has a plate mail in that engagement, he has 60% more survivability. Well, you it's know what? He bought a Perseverance. Incredible. The wrong item, honestly. Put your TP scroll in your stash. Buy a goddamn plate mail. They have a minus armor draft. You're the only person on the team to not be buying armor items. Everybody else has like tons of armor items and he hasn't bought any. I mean, maybe they didn't solar crest him when they should have or something like that, but get solar crested and have a plate mail. And then he just doesn't die in those circumstances. They don't waste global silence. They don't get three heroes killed on the way back. Like, the amount of game, uh, game control that EG got from that little pressure there and by him standing out of position is huge. They could actually lose the game now because of that. Whereas before, if they just backed off after getting that Rax, it's like 95% chance they win. Now it's like 60, 70 maybe. Yeah, definitely some really big kills going to someone that you don't want holding on to them. And EG, they see, uh, they see the glimmer of hope for the first time. This is looking like, you know, they can leave their side of the map. They can leave their fountain. They can actually make the moves. And of course, Templar Assassin, as farmed as she is, is going to have no trouble dealing with the two waves of super creeps. A couple psi blades just cut right through them. Yep. Weaver, not the best at it. In their defense, it's basically just like Darkseer maybe and TA, like you said, but we'll just has to do what they did before. Push all the lanes out, get a little bit of map control. I think they still have their gem. Um, no? Oh, yeah, they do. Disruptor has one. Dire does not have one. So they should still have good map control. Get map control, push the lanes out, take a Roche maybe, or do a smoke fight. Something like that would be a good place to be. You can feel the complexity are definitely a bit more uncomfortable than they were. Staying very close together as five, really trying to decide what the best course of action is to regain their lead. And it looks like they're going to try to go in for Zai again, who's solo. I mean, yeah, he's got a TP, but he, he's, a, he's a crazy man. Going to try to force step himself out of the Atos. There's a glimpse back. Monkeys is playing Ring Around the Rosie, and that's going to be a dead Slardar. Moose, Moose damage is still super good. He's going to be able to finish Shiva's with this. Oh, yeah, uh, 44 int. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> Moose able to pick up the Lotus Orb. So he does have 10 armor now in his defense. And I think like he's going to build Chivas afterwards. I like that. Just stack the armor. He's got tons of HP. Um, anything else item-wise new? AC is finished on Shadow Fiend, of course. Monkey has the Lotus. Manta. And uh, he's getting very close to his 25. I think he goes for the turn aura. He's got it, right? Probably, yeah. Because he's got so much strength, I think it's worth it. It would, it would apply to his Shadow Fiend as well would be kind of nice. Then they could only have like one person hitting buildings and it could be Shadow Fiend and he would just be covered by Return Aura and Wisp and stuff like that. One second stun duration is pretty good though, I must say, talent tree wise, but I think you skip it now because of all the BKBs. So yeah, I, I agree. Definitely the Return Aura is the thing to go up here. Templar Stas and the first one in the game to actually tick over that level 25 and she's going to go for the Refraction Instances. Very unsurprising choice. Yeah, you, you always get that one on TA. It just makes a big difference. And there's there's some damage over time on the coal side, but there's not that much. Um, she also finishes the Bloodthorn. Um, she's in a pretty good spot. Does not have buyback, though. And I think EG kind of has to play in that way. Oh, very few of them do have buyback, by the way. Basically just like crit. And yeah, that's it. Just the Earth Spirit. If anybody just gets picked off, the game basically ends. So all comes down to this fight. Can EG get a good initiation? Can they pick off the supports at the start of the fight? That's what they got to do. I'm gonna see his monkeys is ready to get this going. He's gonna feel the wrath of that blood storm, blood thorn rather, Hurricane Pike. I just clipping him, but so tanky it doesn't bother him much. If that was a disruptor, Melons is just super dead. Yeah, most likely. We'll just play safe for now. Shiva's guard on silencer is a huge pickup though. It's gonna reduce attack speed heavily for TA. 
He's got some ways to increase his attack speed, but not a lot. Just treads and blood from here. Ah, uh, Monkey's just a little bit asleep at the wheel there, letting the tower hit him, but not really wary of initiations like that. But again, he's fine with that. I'll he really them... doesn't care. Doesn't matter. Seven seconds and he heals back up to full. 300 HP per second from the heart here. That is and, good. And he's removing um, the silence and the amp damage with Lotus Orb rapidly anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Like, their ability to kill him now is so difficult when he has Lotus. Yeah, it's difficult to get him down, but not impossible. I mean, if you lose monkeys right at the start of this fight, Complexity just has to bail. 747 can dish out a ton of damage, but no one else can just eat all the spells like monkeys is doing here. Look at that! He does not give a hoot! But Sumail is just unloading on him. Just doing the same kind of thing? Because every time that he comes forward and does this, as long as the tower is attacking him, he's getting tower damage in. Oh, that's gotta be so frustrating. And they're, they're focusing all their attention bottom. Meanwhile, the super creeps, and they're doing an alright job pushing in mid and top. So just trying you, to wear thin EG's patience. You see what they're doing with the medallions as well? Uh, medallion and Solar Crest both stack because they're different. So as long as Monkeys walks to the front here, and both can be cast on him for armor bonus. Just gonna keep doing it. Tower's getting low. Oh, that's so triggering now. He may get punished here. You gotta force him here. Is, is this it? Is oh, this the this death of Monkey? That's a back wall if I ever saw one. There we go. We got that nice static storm rolling under the global. It's doing a fair amount of work holding Ichi back. No one of complexity has died just yet, but Z-Freak's in an unfortunate position trapped in the trees. Monkeys, no one else is around him for that hoof stomp. He can't find what he needs. There's a relocate out. Complexity trying to minimize losses here, but they find the TA. That's huge. She does have buyback now. They lose the silencer, and Monkeys wants to go in for more. Arteezy does get the kill on 747 meanwhile, and now it's just gonna be Monkey strapped between literally a rock and a hard place. As he's now just trying to nope. hide his time. Alright, so All right. EG. It looked unfortunate for them, but complexity to get right back in there. Run away and die. Nice fight by them. Uh, basically, uh, we're still probably looking probably universe. Dead. Yeah, I mean, that was just a uh, slow, painful death, and there is a gem now able to be claimed by universe. That's Meanwhile, pretty costly for Cole there. I mean, the the yeah. fight basically started. The, the the centaur didn't get forced early at all. It, he was down to like forty percent HP before he got forced, and it might have been Cole trying to play around that. Like, oh, we'll just get him low. That way, when it gets really bad, we'll force him out. We'll try to bait out their spells. That's basically what happened. But then EG just decided to chase as they knew global silence was down. That's a big problem. Can't deal with because it prevents the darkseer from casting spells. Uh, if he hasn't used Greaves, unless he has Greaves, of course, um, or Sardar or uh, Earth Spirit. When the Global Silence is down, they can actually engage, and that's what they did. They got a lot of kills out of it, too. I mean, so the... it just seemed issues of, uh, they just didn't keep the center alive. Maybe the medallions weren't up, the Solar Crest wasn't up, stuff like that. Third Roche gonna be attempted by the Dire Side. Now, Radiant do still have their Shrine available, so if they get wind of this, they can send someone in pretty quickly, I wanted to say. And in that fight that looked so terrible for Complexity, I mean, it it was but the, the very dim light at the end of the tunnel was that the uh, super creeps were able to do about half damage this tier four, so at least clearing out some structures in the base. But Roche will go down. Easy with an Aegis. G man, that's that's the important dead thing dead effigy. See that little hole in the ground? Oh it's my god, kind of complexity! Cool they're monsters. Well, it was the creep. It was the creeps, you know. I mean, they well, would Cole's still. not into breaking effigies, but you know, you can't can't always control your minions. Zai gets so close. Oh, they find him. Look at that sentry placement. Oh, they get the glimpse back. They actually have the follow-up damage they need. The glimpse is not quite on point into the kinetic field, but they get the Atos and they get the kill. And now it's really Arteezy and Universe going in, trying to find oh, he something here. Another nice back wall, but there is going to be that silence coming out. And you see this bug stuck in the kinetic field under the static storm. Gets down to about half health and look at this Earth Spirit. Double miss on going down just yet. Oh, the time lapse from Arteezy. He's still up. He's able to go scoochy out of this. And now Sumail with that BKB rolling is looking for more. The damage just doesn't seem to be enough. The silence is so gosh darn tanky. Arteezy escapes within a fraction of his life. They lose the Earth Spirit. Sumail is going to gobble up the cheese. He wants to live. The what? Melt Strike finishes off the silencer from 100 miles away. And now another vacuum back down to the low ground. Monkeys is low, but he's so gosh darn tanky. There we go. 7 for 7 going in. Finds Huge. the kills that they need. Everyone has buyback. On the side of EG, there's a gem on the deck, and now it's just Weaver running for his life. That was definitely worthwhile for Complexity. What a crazy fight that got so bad for Cole in a couple moments there. Moo really didn't think he was going to die, but that, that crit at the end or something, maybe it was like the, uh, the Bloodthorn oh, breaking creeps. or something. He just went down. Arteezy only... realizing enemy heroes. Yeah, with only uh, Arteezy left alive, the creeps are starting to go to work on the dire base. Really now, fast Arteezy's going to reveal himself here. 
They have punished for this. They lost their gem in that fight. Just trying to slow them down by a little bit of time. Sure, Sakuchi movement speed is really making a big difference here, but killing Monkey without like a lot of team members is very unlikely. I bet that he's just so tanky. Almost nothing they can do. Oh, big nuke here. He could stampede for this. Maybe get a kill. He's trying. Zai just he keeps dying, and this time he's uh dead for 70 seconds. Has the buyback, but it's going to be super costly. That that spell amp is actually incredible. I I'm very oh. surprised the centaurs don't go there often. Let's see if Mega Creeps are going to be coming out here. There was the Bloodthorn spent, but 747 immediately able to get that off. So the last tower defending their last Drax is now gone. Now oh. they're in a bad position again. Buyback force there. Another smoke. And this time kill. there's a relocate up from the IO as well. And they've got an Alpha Wolf. Huge damage increase here. Look, they're just killing the Rax. Oh, this is going to be huge, though. EG have to hold here or it's not looking great. Monkey's getting whittled down to about half health, but all he needs to do is walk away and recharge. The Rack's getting low. Is it going to be Mega? 747's content on that. The complexity go in. They get all three Racks down. Should be able to back out without a scratch. They'll or lose not. at least one. Yeah. Yep, that's a scratch. That, that's a big scratch. Two, maybe. Two deaths is, is completely fine for Cole right now. Three, the oh, they got Centaur. Oh, that's going to be a huge kill. He's worth so much money. It's going to fully occupy them for like a minute trying to kill him. They do it. <laughs> Ten seconds. Couldn't even finish the sentence. You know, Caster's Curse. I thought it was going to take really longer, is. but now Weaver and Sumail really starting to do that damage. The minus armor they have is incredible right now. Minus 20 from Corrosive, plus the Deso, plus Arteezy's bugs. A lot of impact here. And three deaths was cut. That was just one, maybe two. It's okay, but oh, now that could it. force three buybacks. Still terrible for EG by all means, but going to try to go for the back door, it looks like. I mean, it's not really back door. They already got creeps in the base. 747 just making his way up. He's just going in. Tier four. It doesn't really stand crit. that much of a chance. Zai's going to come Snow back glyph. forward, land the double man crush, but they've still got the alpha wolf around. The damage is incredible, and Zai, he gets low, but Arteezy now here to focus down Z Freak 747. Tries to go for the Requiem, will end up just letting it rip in uh, in base, or at least thinking about it. But nice relocate out. Yeah, really uh, good good stampede right. as well by Centaur to reduce the damage they took for that little brief second. Oh, rest in peace, Z-Freak. He tried his best. I mean, Completely the fact that though. they were able to get Shadow Fiend out of there and also do damage to the towers is huge. They lose melons, but oh. monkeys, he wants revenge here. They want to go for Sumail. Do they have vision? Oh, <laughs> they Not. know exactly where he is. 747 threatens the Requiem, and that's enough to get Sumail to hop away. A little TP back to base and just go for the full reset here. Kills like that are absolutely game-changing. Like, that's the that's the difference between a star player right now. The fact that he killed Disruptor while his team is Mega Creep. Like, Disruptor did not expect that in the slightest. So that ward doing big work. Getting the Disruptor kill means they can't even 5-man push for 60 more seconds. So just buys EG some time. Definitely what they need right now. 60 seconds more until their Glyph comes off cooldown, for example. That's one of the reasons that they pressured mid there. Yeah, as unlikely and rare as Mega Creep comebacks are, it's, it's looking pretty good for EG, all things considered. They've definitely still got a shot in this. It's not just, you know, waiting to pull the Band-Aid off. One more good fight in complexity, they're going to start losing their racks. There's no no buybacks on two heroes now, though. Centaur and Disruptor buying back. So the the three important heroes, uh, arguably, well, I guess uh, it's SF, basically, and Silencer are going to have buyback. But the Centaur is definitely one of the important ones. So EG just needs to get a good fight, uh, win the fight, Push out all the lanes, or potentially hold the lanes while you push one lane and get some racks advantage. On the bright side, the tier three on the bottom is gone, so technically uh, they could perch? thrown their opponents. Take What's a up? look at uh, Sumail's inventory. We're ready to win some oh, games. Oh hell yeah! It's definitely time. It's definitely time. For <laughs> if if there was a rapier game, you're mega creeps against complexity. It's looking good. You need one more fight to go your way. You're a Templar assassin. This is the item with your name on it. This is one time I kind of wish he had Daedalus over Bloodthorn because the crit value is a lot higher in Daedalus, but, um, you know, Bloodthorn has been more useful. You can't really just sell it at this point. But he can definitely kill some supports right now. Problem is, I mean, you saw Sumail get out by the skin of his teeth in that last initiation because Complex didn't have vision, but if they had a sentry in that area, Sumail would have been easy pickings. He goes down here, it's, that's it. Disruptor does buy a gem, still sitting on the courier, but... Can bring it out for now if needed. I think it's better if they just don't feed the gems. Just sit in their base, let the lanes push out. Like that's the advantage that they have from Mega Creeps. They don't have to try to hide. Here we go. Here. 
Uh, to get real, they're going in. They initiate onto the Centaur Warbinder. Interesting play. All my frames just dropped, and they're going in. EG are stuck up. Everyone's oh. in that awesome static storm. Melons with the blades on Disruptor. They get the kill in the TA. There's a Rapier on the deck. EG, they're scrambling to stay in this. Meanwhile, the creeps tearing apart the base. They're on the ancient buybacks of plenty from EG. It's now or never as the throne is exposed. Still sitting at about four fifths health, but we now got a rapier on the side of complexity. Who's holding? Well, that vacuum was so good, but that kinetic field was even better. It guaranteed that they could pay off the oh. TA, and that pretty much is going to be most likely the end of the game. But they've got to kill the rest of EG. There's four up here. I mean, do they, or can they just hit the structures? Silence is waiting for a big pop now. Here we go. Silence onto monkeys, but he's not feeling too scared about that. Darkseer now running for his life. Universe thinking about going in for some more plays, but... It's getting low. It's, yeah, the Ancient. It's it's going down. Moo, he's got his eyes in the prize, and that's going to be Complexity taking game number... That's already, but we're moving forward with... Yeah, a little surprising here, but I think their draft was really cool. Um, EG played amazing in the laning stage, they played amazing in the late game, but that, that one like four minute period where they dropped a team fight in the Radiant Tier 1 tower, it changed everything. It put Cole in this huge lead, their, their team was so good at just five man pushing, that's what it does, and EG gave them that advantage. So they cannot make that mistake again in the second game, or they have to make sure that Cole doesn't have such a good five man strat, because I really like their draft, they played really well. Did show some signs of weakness late game, so they got to clean that up if they want to keep.